Well, how's it going, guys? Welcome back. What a beautiful day it is. Check it out. I've knocked off slightly early so I can get out for an hour on the bike. Now, you guys have been haranguing me to do a year review on the Super Duke GT. And as the blimmin' inspection light or the service light came on two days ago, that means I've had this bike exactly one year. So, what we're going to do now is uh, do a bit of a vid, talk through um, what I like about the bike, what I don't like about the bike, how I've basically gone with it for the year. So, if you're interested in that, stay tuned and I'll I'll see you in a sec. So it's been one year. I've owned the beast for one year now. And how has it been? Well, how many Ks have I done? I've done maybe sort of 12,000 kilometers in that year. Today with a couple of ups and downs. Um, but I should say before I continue, all the Ks of miles that I put on my bikes are purely fun miles. I don't do any commuting. It's purely evenings or weekends or trips away. Pure fun kilometres. And in that time, uh, within the 12,000 kilometres, I've done a European tour on this bike, which was 4,500 kilometres in a one -er on that tour. And I had no problems whatsoever. Um, with comfort on the bike I had no sort of issues um, it was all plain sailing uh, the only thing I did have with the bike that went wrong was the mass and cylinder failed um, up on the um, for the clutch um, so I had that replaced under guarantee so what I think I'll do now is go through some of the negatives the things that I don't like about the bike which there aren't many but I think we'll get the negativity out of the way and then uh, move on to the positivity so the first thing that's the, it's not, I mean we're talking niggles here the first thing I don't like um, in particular is uh, the sort of menu structure well the menu structure is fine within itself it's just that when I want to turn the heated grips on or change in riding mode while on the move I'm used to bikes that have a ride mode button or a heated grips button so it's just a push of a button change whatever mode or put your heated grips on to whatever, what level you want on this it's a pain in the cock you have to go through into the menu scroll down heated grips scroll into heated grips yes I'll have it on minimum medium maximum you're pushing the button blimmin 10 times before you get the heated grips on so it's a bit of a distraction when you're doing it while you're moving obviously you shouldn't be doing too many things while uh, while on the move um, but that's a bit of a noise you know I'd rather have just a push of the button on they go or two pushes to go for medium three pushes for high and away you go the same you know changing any riding mode or changing your damping it's all in the menu structure so you've got to fart around looking at the screen and go scrolling through the menu structure so that's a bit of a balls ache but you know like anything you get used to it but you know a bit of a noise a uh, second little thing is probably it's, I don't even know if it's a negative it doesn't really bother me that much but the quick shifter isn't that smooth I think it's um, it seems to be with V twins, flat twins, V twins, parallel twins. The RSV4 heard Lamb Chop saying on his uh, last review of the RSV4 factory that the quick shifters aren't that smooth. Um, although you know, for example, on the GS, I think that's a terrible quick shifter. It's really clunky and really not good. Um, this is a lot better, but it's still not as smooth as thousand cc motorbikes I've had with inline fours they seem to be on the ball my S1000 XR was a butter smooth quick shifter and down blipper up and down took no effort none of this after changing the gear it seems on the V twins that if you're at lower revs at lower speeds that um, they tend to be a bit a uh, bit clunky slap you on the back of the head type of thing now I don't have a down blipper on this it's just a quick shifter but it's, it's smooth enough, um, but you know, it's just a small niggle thing. But when you're on the revs, it is smooth, so probably, maybe it's not that bad. It doesn't bother me anyway. And the third thing that sort of uh, gets me a bit is, uh, it's probably the, the biggest uh, negative I've got, is the, um, the running costs of this bike. Now the bike itself is expensive. It's higher on uh, tax, it's higher on insurance than I've ever had on any other bikes, which I can get over, it's okay, it's just a bit more. Mostly is the servicing costs on this bike. Now whether that's, um, I think that's true of sort of a lot of V-twins, I know the servicing costs on the Ducatis 
they're high as well. Now I took this in within a few weeks of ownership for the 1000 km service and it cost me 320 euros which is shocking for an oil change and for them to go through their shitty little check sheet I appreciate they have to go through it all and it does take some time and for them to do it properly etc but 320 euros that's that's mental that's expensive and now that the lights come on for the 15,000 or the yearly service is due now but it's um, I'm gonna get it done next month and, and by that time I'm gonna be knocking on the 15,000 kilometer door anyway so it's gonna be the sort of the larger service so I phoned up to ask how much of that was gonna cost so with all the oil changes fluid changes braking clutch um, fluid filters etc 500 smackaroonies 500 euros again as it seems high um, they charge you three hours labor plus parts plus all the other bits and bobs um, and it's just a lot more than what I've paid for on other bikes now you may be saying well you know why didn't you why didn't you check that out before you bought the bike well <laughs> well I did and before I bought it I asked what the service costs would be for this bike and they told me completely different prices if I compare it to my S1000 XR for the first service for a thousand kilometers that cost me 169 euros for the same thing oil change and for them to go through their mandatory checks so half the money for the S1000 and even the second service at 10,000 kilometers that only cost me 200 euros so it just seems that everything but I think that's true of of all the modern bikes now all the high spec bikes everything is is costing a lot of money and for servicing I hear it I see it online people getting charged a fortune it seems to be all across the board so that's my last niggle but for the positives I mean it's just it's just endless on this bike I mean I could go on all day about what I like about it I just love everything so basically if you just take out the negatives of what I've just said everything else on the bike I just love it this bike has got so much character I just love this v-twin motor it's, it's such an animal and um, it sounds amazing yeah just just pull out man don't worry about it um, it's just so, got so much grunt from all over the rev range and most of it is low down to be honest and I've not even ragged this I've not even seen how fast this thing will go because it's just mental but what I'm going to do now is stop and find a nice place to stop over and I'll go through some of the things that I've added to the bike and then we'll chat again a bit more about all the things that I do like about it, some of the other bits and bobs but just to have a good look around the bike and I'll show you exactly what I've added to the bike um, all of the added extras and aftermarket stuff that I put on I will put links into the uh, in the description so you can check them out for all you Super Duke GT owners if you're interested so let me just find a place to pull over and we'll check things out Well, this will do. Cue heavy panting and breathing. So here she is, one year old. Now what have I had done to it over the year? Now in that time I've had um, the 1000 inspection or the 1000 kilometer inspection and now it's knocking on the 15,000 kilometer inspection is due. So I'll have had two services within the next few weeks. Uh, one set of tires. Um, I've gone through the stock um, Angel GTs they were done at about 5,000 K's weren't totally impressed with them not great always gone back to Michelin for the pilot roads and now I'm on the road fives and I've got another set in the garage um, waiting to go on once these are shot now these are taking me on a track day at the end of this month so to see how these hold up but basically if you take a look at them tires there these have done now and they're knocking on 7,000 kilometers and there's still heaps left on them so they're going to be hammering me around the track so i am due some front brake pads they are pretty low um but I'd, i'll get that done um later on there's still a bit left on them now they are expensive as well phoned up and asked about them and uh they want 100 euros for two pads so 200 bucks for the front pads which is oh it's mental it's just expensive this bike man all the parts servicing it's doing with sweden still let's uh let's keep uh, to the subject it is absolutely gorgeous i mean i love it 
I mean, it's a, K, a lot of KTM's are kind of um, the looks aren't for everybody. A lot of people think they're ugly, but I think it looks fantastic. I think it just looks mean, and even the new one um, looks even better. I think I wasn't sure about the new headlight taking off the um, Super Duke R, but um, I love it. It just looks it just looks it just looks like an absolute monster, doesn't it? Right. So what have I had done to it? I've added the SW Motec um, sump guard, if you want to call it a sump guard, crash bash or bash plate, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a bash plate on this. It's just optical, really. Um, so I put that on it. I've put the crash bars on from SW Motec. A lot of people have asked about them if they stick out wide enough, if it was to topple over. Now it's pretty much sort of bang on. Now with crash protection, it's not complete prevention. It's sort of damage limitation. If the thing falls over or you chuck it down the road, you know, and if it tips over that bit more, um, things are going to get broke on it but it's, it's damage limitation um but that's all i'm going to say about that so a lot of questions about the screen um it's a black screen but it is the stock screen and all i've done is sprayed it on the inside with car uh, not carbon with um liquid vinyl so i sprayed it on the inside in a matte finish and because it's obviously the standard screen can you get a glossy finish um to the outside of it so that's all i did to it I've got the um, EvoTech Performance, can you see it in there? EvoTech um, Radiator Guard, now that is a must for me um, because um, I've seen people, or a lot of people, have um, busted radiators um, so it's, I've always put them on my bikes, um, it's a must I think, you get any stone chips in there and you've, and you've had it. A lot of questions again on the mirrors, now these are from high side, these mirrors, um, I get a lot of questions about them and the most people on the Super Duke are, they underslung they're underslung so they come down underneath which I look I think looks better but because it's got a bigger tank on this bike it touches the tank when you uh, when you turn so they had to go above we replaced the um, clutch and brake levers with these uh, Reximo levers again all the links are in the description to all the parts that I've changed um, which I think look good and you can design them how you want you can basically color code them how you want it comes in four parts and then each four four part you can have a different color or the same color you can basically have it how you want so I went with the orange and the sort of gunmetal gray just to match the the color of the bike uh, have you seen recently I've added the the Cobra SP2 the exhaust with the carbon sleeve sounds amazing um, really happy with that exhaust not that the stock can was crap but um, I think that just sounds sounds so much better and I've had a custom seat done from also from SW Motec their custom seat department which only started sort of a year or two ago so they did that for me just to make it a bit more comfortable because the stock um, seat is just it's just a plank of wood it's, it's terrible but I think KTM have got it in mind to put a crap seat on it because they sell the ergo seats uh, the comfort seats from power parts which are heated they've probably got that in mind you know just try and sell their accessories and that is another good thing I like about KTM the power parts um, uh, accessory sort of department um, from them you can get so many accessories for KTM it's absolutely awesome again it's expensive but um, you can you can pimp your bike right up with all kinds of bits and bobs from them um, that they sell so uh, yeah that's that's really a, another another good point KTM is just a, such a cool brand now I've also added this aluminium rear rack from SW Motec I think it's the smallest one that they do I think there's three off the top of my head this is the alo rack I think there's a speed rack and something else a bigger one adventure rack not not quite sure if you if you want if you're interested then uh, click on the link in the description now this is a smaller one um, and I think it works well on the bike because I do um, I do carry gear and I've got a, an adapter plate a bigger plate that sits on the top of that it's all quick release um, if I want to attach my bigger rear bag um, and then I just leave this on this is a fixed um, fixture so it stays on the bike I don't think it's too intrusive on the looks it's it's small enough and from KTM the KTM power parts I've added the orange aluminium um, caps on the brake and clutch reservoir you can see that one over there again I could quickly show you the um, 
um, the tank the tank bag systems that I got again from SW Motec basically it's a quick release tank if you are unfamiliar with them you got these bike specific um, rings on the top that screw into the um, filler cap and basically you've got on your on I've got many different um, tank bags many different sizes basically there's plate on the bottom and it just ratchets then onto the bike and uh, away you go so that's a, a good thing that I like to have and again um, which is new I've only had this on the four or five weeks from ultimate add-ons is the telephone case fully waterproof and I can mount that all over I've got these ball joints all over the bike and it's basically just with these um, arms that you can fully adjust and everything uh, stays nice and firm nice and secure um, so it's nice to have my telephone on there just so I can control a bit of music and whatnot I've got my um, Garmin 590 um, mounted on the top of the uh, on the top of the clocks now this is also a KTM um, power parts part not this Garmin cradle that comes with the sat nav but the mount point um, for the sat nav that's from KTM that was about 100 bucks as well that wasn't cheap either um, and that's a permanent fixture on there it's not lockable I used, I used to have a lockable one on my on my BMW from Toratec so I had to get rid of that because it wouldn't fit on here but you know I'm not too bothered about that that's probably I don't know another negative I could say but I kind of like it that it's a negative that the um, the throttle mapping on this bike, I mean I ride this bike majority of the time 90% in sports mode with sports damping so it's hardened suspension, fully um, fully sport mapping and the throttle mapping is it's just, well, it's, it's mental and it, it can be a handful and I did ride the last video that I did in Zauerland, I'll put another link in the description for that, it rained a bit um, so we had a bit of rain um, throughout and it is a handful and I didn't bother changing the, the bike into rain mode um, and it's it's definitely um, you definitely have to be careful in the rain with the sport mapping and the sport throttle mapping it what is difficult to ride you have to concentrate and you have to be precise yeah, so that's basically all the stuff I had put onto it. There's maybe I don't know two grand if that on accessories on on this bike. Um, a lot of it is sponsored for me, so that's um, that's a bonus. But it's, it must be knocking on around the the two grand, maybe not, probably not even. Um, fuel fuel economy on the bike is pretty good. I was expecting it to be a lot thirstier than what it is. Now it is a 23 litre tank on this bike. Um, but here in Germany they measure it in how many litres per 100 kilometres so it's it's normally depends on how I ride it um, but normally around six six and a half litres per 100 kilometres so for a 20 litre th uh, or a 23 litre tank I'm knocking on the 400 k 400 kilometres that I can get out of a tank now I've, I've gone to about 380 before filling up but it was pretty uh, pretty much running on fumes so maybe get a few more out of it maybe 390 at a push but that's still pretty good I mean my my last bike the S1000 that had a 20 20 litre tank and I was getting similar mileages so although the tank is three litres larger it's a bit more thirsty than that bike but I'm still getting my sort of you know knocking on the door 400 k's per tank and that's that's good for me to know from for my sort of touring touring riding aspects of things um so not not particularly thirsty but another thing i like about this bike is is the build quality and it is it is good quality it's um it's really sort of it's a high spec bike anyway it's just, uh, not a cheap bike it's pretty expensive but the quality of even the plastics i mean i've never been a fan of plastics on bike and bikes and when there's too much of them and the plastic looks cheap and cheap and nasty then i've always um you know covered it or painted it or or put some vinyl on there but on this bike i haven't had to i know although i've done it on the um the front um, fender and um, that's coming off soon um, but I didn't do it because you know I wanted to cover up hideous plastics on this bike it, it doesn't look um, bad at all so uh, the build quality on it is is really good and as I said I've had no issues other on the mast and cylinder that's what that's what got replaced here under warranty um, I've had uh, no other issues with her speaking of um the vinyl wrapping you know i know i did it on the front fender as i said it's coming off because um i've got a full set of graphics coming from this bike from a new um a newish company um that contacted me i got in contact with them basically she's she's going to look totally different i'm not going to give anything away but the whole bike is getting um um graphics put on it not just a few decals or anything the whole bike so it's going to look completely different 
Uh, they wanted to send it to start of this week, so hopefully today or tomorrow it's been sent out. Hopefully I'll get it by the end of the week, and then I've got the next week to... Uh, I'm going to do it myself. Completely change the look of the bike, so looking forward to that. Well, that is pretty much it. That's all I can think about what I wanted to talk about. If I have missed anything that you did want me to answer, then uh, be sure to ask me in the comments section below. But I'm pretty sure I've covered most of the main things that I've... Uh, that I wanted to speak about but I suppose mainly most of you wanted to know how I've been getting on with it and uh, that's basically what I've covered um, and if I'm still liking it and a lot of you still ask if I if I like it over the other bikes that I've had and especially over the S1000 and I would say uh, yes I don't miss that bike um, this this for me is is the one the only thing that's sort of uh, doing my Swede in a bit is the um, is the high servicing costs um, but you know, I can probably get over that. <laughs> It's just all about whether a bike puts a big smile on your face and this definitely um, this definitely does and over the year of ownership you know even with the high costs of things um, it hasn't put a downer on it at all I think the good outweighs the bad tenfold and as, as I said there's been minimal bad things or minimal things that I don't I don't like about it and it's the two things were just niggles and the other was just uh, the servicing cost but basically everything else I just I just love the thing it's an absolute joy to ride it's uh, although it is a bit of a weapon um, intimidating perhaps um, it's not too difficult to ride as I said before you do have to watch out for the uh, for the snatchy throttle in sport mode but basically other than the things I've covered um, there's nothing else um, that I don't like about it so uh, that's got to be a good thing so there you go I think I've exhausted this video now hopefully it's not been too long-winded but you know I think a lot of things need to get said and a lot of things need to get covered and you guys did request it and ask me to do it so um, hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully there was enough information um, in it for you especially for those of you that are considering getting one of these um, now I've, I've said on a previous video that I did want to get the new one the 2019 bike but that's not going to happen yet because um, it's just too much more extra money on top to, to justify doing it um, just for the few added extra things that you get on it I will take another look um, next year into changing it possibly um, but you know I've only had this bike a year and things can get a bit stupid and it never ends does it but, but because I've got such a good deal on this bike the 2017 bike they offered four grand off the price um, obviously bought it in 2018 and back in in, the, in that particular time um, it was four grand cheaper the 2017 bike over the 18 bike and all you were getting on the 18 bike was a different paint job so that was a that was a total no-brainer obviously it's made that bit more interesting now with the 2019 bike because it's had a total new overhaul new facelift nice big tft dash which i love um, lots of little things that they've changed on it um, but again it's still that's over 19,000 euros now for that bike so there's still still five grand more than what i paid for this and when you think about it is that five grand worth the extras that you do get for me not not, not at the moment um, but I'd imagine it will be later on um, and I will look into getting it for sure but hopefully maybe next year I'll have another look maybe there's some deals on the uh, 2019 bikes but I imagine the 2018 they'll be sort of trying to trying to sell so I don't know we'll see how we get on um, see if we can get a good offer on one maybe and uh, go from there well there you go I'm going to stop banging on now I'm going to say to for now hopefully that has been of interest for you and uh I'll see you in the next one. Now, what is it? Monday today. I'm off this weekend. Af. I'm off this weekend to touring of Ad for the entire weekend. Hopefully, the weather um, uh, is good to us. I'm off out with BMW. There's going to be about 30 of us going. So, with an overnighter in a hotel, I should be filming the entire event. So, you've got that to look forward to. And another look forward to is the next video, possibly the next one, or the week or the week after, is when I install the whole new graphics on this bike. So, till next time, take care, ride safe. See you out there. See you out for now.